Okay, Paul, let's cut this shit off. <clears throat> um, as some of you might have guessed, since you didn't hear his voice, Rich Voss, or Vose, as a lot of you pronounce it. Uh, People really say that? Yeah, he did an interview just recently where they were like, we're here with Rich Vose. I was like, what the? And that really undercuts when they're like, this guy's really funny. It's like, really? Funny enough that <laughs> yeah. you'd never even... One of my favorite comedians, Rick Vose, is with us. <laughs> um, so instead, I... As a as as my co-host tonight, it's a man who I wished was my husband. It's oh. Christian Finnegan. Oh my gosh, that's what a compliment that that, that is. <laughs> is it? Because that must. That's what's strange to me. Strange about that to me is that I think there aren't two men more different than you physically and, Rich. and personality wise than Rich and I. Yeah. Although, you know, off like Rich is a very nice guy, and I think of myself as being. Excused. You're an asshole. Not when you're not performing and. But super nice on stage. He's super mean on stage, but a nice guy when he's not performing. Right. <laughs> no, think. you're not. Okay. You're never an asshole. No, I think I'm much meaner on stage than I am in real life. I, I, I a lot of times I'm nice off stage, not because I'm a good person, just because I can't stand discomfort and sort of awkward social situations. So I store up all that rage and self. Oh, that's I do that too. Like I. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I, sometimes when I'm talking to a club owner, I'll be like so nice to him, and he's like yammering on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then when I get on stage, I'm like the guy's a jerk. Oh, <laughs> like yeah. I can't stop myself. I'm Absolutely. Just... I'll wait. I'll wait. A, like I'll usually wait in a week or so if there's an anecdote about someone specific before I kind of try to reframe it on stage just in case <laughs> no i don't i don't i can't stop myself i'll go right into it like yeah. if you were bugging me right before i'll just even on though the stage. person's at the back of the yes, room watching i can't <laughs> stop myself <laughs> it's called self-sabotage and people like. say she's an asshole um before we go any further because also paul my ear these are too hot does that is that too appropriate to all right to, these headphones, I can't, I don't know how to turn the them cans, down. cans. The cans. We're in a new studio. I guess it's been around for a while, but we weren't allowed in it last time. So we're in the remodeled it's very Opie impressive. and Jimmy. It's fabulous. Mm -hmm. This is all, this board, is this the same? Oh. <laughs> that was really pathetic. He walked in, literally just turned the biggest knob right in front of... <laughs> right in front of his volume, <laughs> headphone volume, right on it. This is not where I normally sit. I usually sit there. Rich. You're in the driver's seat tonight. The man sits here. Yeah, when we came in, you said this is, uh, you feel like a man should be sitting here. Yeah, I don't, I'm, I'm too ladylike. Oh, I should turn that off. Uh, oh, can, yeah, can you add, um, Paul, can you add Jeannie Gaffigan to the list? <clears throat> we have we have the Gaffigans coming in tonight later. So we have all five? The kids, This too? is going to be fantastic. And the kids are coming in, Gosh. and uh, we're going to set up a little uh, wading pool right over there in the corner. Did you see the, the footage today of the bouncy castle that flew up into the air? No, I didn't see it. Yeah, with kids in it. Oh, wow. Yeah. I mean, I don't mean to sound excited about it, but... <laughs> no, but the parents were probably like, oh, finally a break. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I will say, until that hit the ground, it must have been awesome. Yeah. <laughs> like Did they get up, hurt? You know, I only saw... I always saw, forget to ask the pertinent questions. I, I, and that says something about me because I don't know. I just saw it, like, on a screen, you know, without the sound. But, uh, but yeah. Didn't, didn't feel... Didn't hit you hard enough was, to turn uh, the, the sound up? The TV was on mute. The remote was across the room. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I wonder, if, I wonder if they died. If Dude. anybody knows. Oh, okay. So let me just get through the stuff that yeah, Rich yeah. does. We're Sirius 206 XM 103. You probably don't know, already know that if you're listening. Absolutely. Right? You don't need to say that part. Uh, you can call in 866-969-1969. Go ahead. Ask us some questions. Oh, we've got one. One, one question already the up there. Yeah. Uh, and Rich Vos is in California. If you're listening to us in the great state of California, uh, you're listening to us in drive time. Is it's, she making deals? It's drive time there. We're in a good... Uh, uh, this Friday through Sunday, Ventura Comedy Club, Ventura, California. Go check them out. Have you ever played that club? Never. No, never. I don't know. I, I've never really played any of the clubs in, in well, I mean, like, you know, five minute, ten minute spots. Can you just read what he Plug written? at least three times. Plug at least three times. Rich is like, he only, should, if, he, if, if, if he had his way, the whole radio show would just be plugs. Why don't we That's just get him all out of the way? Why don't you plug it three times now? Just get it out just of the way. Just get it out of the way. This Friday through <laughs> Sunday, Ventura Comedy Club, Ventura, California, Rich Vos. 
Slayer. You, cause you should go see, if you haven't seen him, you should go see him. He's a, Absolutely. Rich is one of the greatest. He's a terrific comedian. If you like abuse, sit in the front. If you don't, a little farther back. Is there a name for Rich's fans, like Vosians or, you know, Voss? I <laughs> know, but we should. Voss bosses? I don't know. Uh, how about dickheads? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'll work. That'll work. Uh, Richard, uh, dickheads. Okay, so let's take a call. I'm really not doing good tonight. <clears throat> I'm, lot, I'm usually a lot better when I'm just reacting to what an asshole Rich is. Okay. DC, Ryan. Yo, uh, yeah. Glad for y'all to take my call. I got some questions. Um, some questions. I recently huh? decided, well, a question. Okay. I decided to buy a ring for my girl, proposed to her. Uh huh. I've come to the realization that I don't really like her. Uh oh. But I love her. She's good for me on all the stuff that I. I need her to be good for me for, but... As eh, like go a, through with it anyway, then. As a person, yeah. I mean, you know what? I'm telling you the truth right now. Whoever you marry, you're going to start to hate a lot of the shit that they do anyway. It that just is, is the, the way that it no, is. I'm going to hit a curve. Yeah, what? you're already... Yeah, you, you've already... You see what's coming down the pike. You're not going to be surprised by it. I think you have to ask yourself, is this the person I want to annoy me for the rest of my life? Yeah. Like, is this, is this annoyance the kind of annoyance that I can put up with for the rest of my life? Right. Yeah, I feel like I can jet out mind trick a little bit. And, so you I know, can, I mean, a lot of the times the thing that you like the most about the person in the beginning is the thing that really starts to fucking irritate you. So if if things already irritate you, maybe that will come around to things that you actually... uh respect and, and enjoy about the person no, i don't know no. how it all works I, don't. I do know that that um marriages that are planned what are they called uh, arranged arranged marriages they do as well or better than yeah than well, us I mean, picking our own well that's true but mostly because usually if you're in an arranged marriage like the women will really die option. if they try to leave true you've got me on that one <laughs> it's not like if you're in an <laughs> the arranged men marriage. are allowed to do whatever they want <laughs> after six months yeah this arranged marriage isn't working out I think right. I think you should probably uh you should ha you should get married but don't invite too many people because it doesn't sound like maybe this might last this might be a starter marriage for you is what it sounds yeah. like. Yeah. Well, let me ask this question. Then. Okay. Um if but that Ryan this is the last it, one. All right, that'll work out. Uh will it is a way to put it do you need your your partner to be your friend or can you just have other friends? No, you, you got it. Well, it's, that's, I think a, you, that's no, a shitty I, one because you lose all your fucking friends after you get married. That is true. I think you, it needs to be somebody who you want to go to the movies with. Do you know what I mean? Like, you have to be able to sit oh, across the table and have a good so conversation. Right. Christian, you know, like, you're so right. Yeah. It ha Here's the number one thing. Do you guys like the same television? Yeah. Th that's going to keep no. you together longer than anything. If you don't like no. the same kind of TV, get out now. Mm -hmm. Get out. Mm-hmm. I would oh, say that's it. as important as sex. I, I, I would go maybe more, more. Maybe yeah. More. yeah, because in the beginning, it was every you know I like sex with everybody. You're right, sex <laughs> in is the sex. Beginning. I mean, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But you know it wears off. Tears All right, forever. Much to appreciate it. All right, Ryan. Good. I'm glad we could see we save lives here. Yeah, I feel very. You know, I feel like we definitely either that or ruined his this woman's life. What made you decide to get married? Cambry, my wife. Decided. Oh, <laughs> Did I mean, she? honestly, I've always one of the things, uh, you know, when you were saying that the things you like about somebody are the things that end up annoying you and vice versa. It is true that I think those things are often related. One of the things that my wife, whose name is Cambry, one of the things she liked about me immediately is that I had a sense of diplomacy, like I diffused this awkward situation in front of her like mm -hmm. the first night we met there were two people who were being kind of getting into it and i kind of diffused it and she really liked that and now she always gets mad at me because i am kind of mamby pamby and one foot in one foot out it's like well that's diplomacy yes. it's like that's like, <laughs> literally what you liked about me but she... i think that's what i liked about rich was that he was so like sort of so straightforward in how he presented himself, uh -huh. you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I remember when we first, one of our first Basic. dates, Is he said, <laughs> he told me that he was the, yeah, he's very, he's dumb. No, he um, told me that he was a, a genius comedian, like with a full straight face, like, <laughs> and I kind of loved that about him. I was like, oh, like, you know, I guess because I'm Canadian and people don't brag, it's not a thing. Like, it, it was really refreshing to hear someone just sort of talk about themselves like that. But now it's like, shut the fuck up. 
that like what do they mean by that what that I'm a genius comedian. He because really, because what well, he was saying, <laughs> now I feel bad, I'm selling him out. Now that he's not here, um, he was saying that he, you know, nobody gets to see, like none of the industry gets to see when he's on the road and he's being such right. a genius, you know, talking to the audience. And I agree that the things that, and that's true of a lot of comedians, that what their genius is doesn't translate to simple five minutes on Letterman or whatever, they have different, a different skill set. Like right. most of my favorite comedians are not the kind of people who will go on Letterman and do five minutes and have it be perfect, you know? Or, or if they are, they, they, th- if you say, oh my God, like this guy, like if you said, oh my God, Todd Glass is on something. He's so amazing. Yeah. Like people might not get how amazing he is from that, from a prepared five and, minute set. Yeah. <laughs> there are certain comedians, I think, who are good at creating a moment in the room like mm-hmm. th- that that you have to kind of be there for and it's a really great quality but it doesn't always translate as well as somebody who's just kind of a joke machine right you know i i can do it all <laughs> i'm just trying to like make sure rich is coming through <laughs> <laughs> okay so you so you dated your wife for how long uh we dated for like two and a half years i guess and then we you were living together uh we were living together yes we were and in then our sta- same damn apartment we live in now. Ten oh, years really? Later. Yeah. Ugh. Um. And so then, where were you in your career when you guys? Because I remember when you first came on the scene, you were fucking hot, like like it was really Christian Finnegan. That's funny. Everybody talked about you, and I remember seeing you outside of the Boston one time, and like that's so bizarre. The way like, that's him. That's the guy. It's so strange the way you're perceived by other people compared to the way you feel like, because I would say when I met my wife, things were just kind of starting to kind of congeal a little bit. Like I was starting to be able to do longer sets and I had, I had already filmed this thing on Chappelle show, which ended up being still is probably the thing that people know me the most from, Right. Um, but it hadn't aired yet. Uh, and so it was kind of like the, what I call the sort of salad days were just about to start and have since ended. But, uh, um, but yeah, no, I never, ever felt like that. I always felt like no one ever took me seriously at all. Really? In any context. Nobody. Um, at least in terms of, I guess, cause people like, I wouldn't say to your fate, I wouldn't have come out of Boston comedy club that night and s- seen you and said to you like, Oh my God, everybody's talking about you. And you're here. I am standing in front of you. You just wouldn't know. I just instead was probably being too cool. Like, hey, what's well, up? Well, you know, and Patrice said something once on one of those uh, Ron Bennington interviews where he, he was saying uh, that you either... And I, I, I should say for the record that Patrice and I were not friends. Uh, <laughs> I worked at Tough Crowd. We were not friends. You were but, a writer uh, on Tough Crowd? Yeah, for a year. Um, but I always thought he was a brilliant comic and just a really smart dude. But he said that you never get anything... Unless you're either He wrote not. me a letter to be read after his death about oh, you. If oh, you yeah. don't mind. <laughs> oh, no. he, there, Patrice O'Neill did not spend 30 <laughs> seconds thinking about me in any context whatsoever. But he, he said in his interview, he said, you never get anything unless you're not ready for it or you should have got it five years ago. And that's so true. That, yes. And when I oh, that is very first started Jesus. getting that, I just wasn't ready to do anything with it. And I still had this... I didn't have, like, I'm lost in this sort of quote unquote millennial generation of like, you know, hey, have I told you about this thing I'm doing? Let me tell you about this thing. Like, I always, I have this sort of very 90s sort of idea of like somebody, I just going to do my work and somebody will find me and (laughs) and someone should tell me when I'm allowed to be successful and that's fine. And and I'll just do good work and someone will notice. Exactly. Um, I, this happened to me once I got a show on HBO and I didn't tell anyone. I was doing a pilot. It was with Chris. Christopher Guest, and I was like, oh, this is so amazing. And when, like, I just thought for sure this is going to get on the air and I'm yeah. going to be a big shot. And mm-hmm. I'll just be so much cooler if people are like, I didn't even know you were doing that. Yeah. And it didn't get picked up. And so after the fact, I had to try to slip it into conversation. <laughs> And people be like, "Oh, really? What's go- going on with it?" And I'd be like, "Oh, it didn't. It didn't get picked up." I and just then it was like I've, over that kind of stuff has just always rubbed me the wrong way. And now that we're in an age where not only is like retweeting compliments not like shame, right? You know, right. To me, that should you should be put in the stockades in the town square and have tomatoes thrown at you. But, well, I feel like it's like if you're at a party and somebody goes, "You know, I've always thought you're a really good comic," and you're like, "Excuse me, yeah, everyone." Yeah. <laughs> Christian just said I was a really great comic. Yeah, especially because you're retweeting it to other people who already follow you. Yes. So it's not 
you know what right. I mean? It's like, yeah, I already like you. Mm-hmm. But now I get the feeling that people retweet compliments, not even necessarily to brag anymore, but because the people who give you the compliments are doing that so you'll retweet it somehow oh. that they want the attention for having complimented you. Oh, right. Because they're trying to, yeah, they're I trying think that's to in get there somewhere. Yes, yes. So they're really, they're not altruistic in complimenting you. Not 100%. It's like 70% they're altruistic. Like maybe this guy with uh, 400,000 followers will retweet, retweet, retweet me. I think that is in there somewhere. Yes. But, uh, but let's yeah. break it down. Let's break down Twitter. Anybody got a Twitter question? Uh, but oh. yeah, I, I've never, um, but yeah, that that's funny that that you thought that. I never thought that. I I told you a few days ago that when 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 I first became aware of you, it was mostly as a Shecky columnist. Oh, my sh- my wonderful Shecky columns. That was around the time that I saw you outside oh, yeah. of Boston. That I was. Um, we never get female callers, uh, but uh, but you're bringing something new to the table, Christian, because we have Melanie on the line. Hello. Mel- yeah, hello, Melanie. How's Hi, Montana? It's I got my name wrong. Oh, uh, whatever. We, no one cares. What do you want to say? <laughs> um, I actually wanted to see what your point of view was on infidelity. My boyfriend, soon to be hopefully a husband of almost five years now, has had intimacy with men a lot and transgender women. Mm-hmm. And I just, I, I still love him. You know, I, I feel a lot more comfortable that he does that with men and transgender women versus actual women. Why? I just, I don't know. I guess maybe I might have a little penis envy and I feel a little more comfortable about it. Wait, but you're just a, you were, uh, what are you? <laughs> are you born a woman? Are you, yeah. Um, so he's bi or something? He's, he's yeah. into both? I don't know anything about this. I, I'll tell you this. If my husband um, was into men, I would probably not stick around. I wouldn't uh, not not I wouldn't. It's not like I would be. I just think that he'd be lying to me his whole the whole that, relationship. That's, that's a good. Is this did he tell you this after the fact, like admitting that he had done it? Or is it like this is something, this is something I do? You came into the relationship knowing about. I think I always knew about it. We've experimented with toys and stuff, and it just kind of one thing led to another. And then I ended up catching him, and he was honest about it. And we split up for a little while and got back together, and it's happened again. But for some reason, you know, I just I I feel comfortable with it, but at the same time, I don't. I think it's more just the lies. Yeah, I, I think you need to make him. Or help him, you know, because it might not be easy for him to kind of come to terms with how he feels about the situation. But I think you need to suss out, is he a gay man who isn't comfortable just pursuing that and he needs still feel like he needs he needs to have like this he, woman. Like you're the beard? Kind of. You need, you need to make sure that that's not the case. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, the weird thing is, like, I always think, like, relationships are just fucking bizarre. Like, yeah. I don't, like, people don't get how Rich and I work. Sometimes I don't get it either, but it just does. We just do love yeah. each other. Uh, despite the, the, the title of this radio show. Um, but, well, all uh, wives hate their husbands. I mean, yeah, I, I hate him the way everyone hates their husband. Um, but, uh, so I don't know if you're okay with it and, and you guys are open and honest with each other. I mean, I don't even think you need to be open and honest with each other. I mean, are if, you being honest with yourself though? <laughs> if, you know, you, if you're okay with it, I guess it's okay. Yeah, it's just the lies, pretty much. But other than that, yeah, I mean, the more dick, the merrier. Would you ever get, like, yeah, get involved? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're actually uh, driving in his truck right now. He's sitting right next to me. We're going down and hopefully going to have a fun weekend. So, oh so there are really very few boundaries in this relationship. What's that? There's very few boundaries. Uh, with yeah, the two think, of you. Uh, I think I'm pretty open about it all. Then I think it's fine, right? Yeah, I mean, as long as you've really sussed it out that you're both being honest with each other and yourselves, you know, I think it's probably a conversation that you need to have and lay out pretty bare. Yeah. All right. That's my well, feeling. thanks, guys. All right, Molly. Talk oh. to you later. Good luck. Enjoy your dicks. Oh, Jesus, she's fucked up, huh? <laughs> I, oh, I, I give Molly, and your low self-esteem. <laughs> I'll do anything for him. 
But I, I guess, you know, I don't know what love is love. I don't know. It's like whatever you want to do. It's one of those things, though, that, you know, it's kind of like when the guy says, you know, like, well, we have an open relationship. And you're like, well, do you, do you both have an open relationship yes, or yes. is this just something you are telling yourself? Well, that's like when you see those stories about like swingers and stuff. And mm-hmm. it's like, but is one person just doing it to keep the other person happy? Or did you both just luck out and find maybe another maybe. person that... I, was I mean, doing... sometimes you see, like, one of the couples has dead eyes. <laughs> oh, those, oh my god, have you ever watched those, like, real sex on HBO? <laughs> I I mean, I've seen them before, yeah. They are the biggest boner killers. Like, they're <laughs> the most so... anti-erotic things you've ever seen in your life. But when they ever have those swingers, and they're all, like, guys with the sort of mullets, or, you know, they, they're just dudes who are slightly too old to be wearing leather pants, and, you know, there's just a gross sort of rural biker like like a flabby i don't know like like a, yes a, like the kind of guy who wears like like a leather jacket but it's like a dad leather jacket yeah. you know well, the only exercise they do is the actual thrusting Ugh. <laughs> Ugh. but do you you and your wife aren't you guys aren't swingers. oh my god my wife would cut my throat oh she would oh yeah well you does know, my, she worry that you're gonna because you're on the road all the time and you know not i mean there was definitely i'll say a you're time. a handsome fellow that's kind of you to say <laughs> um i'm also a terrible liar uh and i find that the easiest way to avoid that is to just i mean i would love to say that the reason i'm faithful to my wife is all morality and it's probably i hope it's a chunk of it but it's also because i just know i'd screw it up and in the age of like facebook and twitter like i would constantly be living in this fear of just one like hey i blew you yesterday you know on your wall or oh something right like that. right like no secret like that's if you are any kind of celebrity and you have sex with someone it will come out you have to kill the person that you're even, with. Even if it's you're like a, a lot of work for a celebrity. Yes, I I think so. Um, I you know my wife, uh, you know her father's in jail for attempted murder. Yeah, I knew that. Yeah, and I would love to say that my wife has not inherited any of those traits. But, uh, <laughs> but she has. Oh my god, do you guys when you guys get in fights, do you bring that up? There are times. It's Apple coming. doesn't fa- fall too far from the tree, honey. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's it's all in there. Um, and you know she really she hates to lose <laughs> in any context oh. like she's very competitive you know uh and so what's her job again well she just opened up a performance venue right but i mean she was she's a pr and marketing director at that club comics oh, that, that okay. closed and then she wrote she quit to write a book and then about her father yeah well about everything you know she grew up in the trailer in the woods that got repossessed and her family lived in a horse barn for a while holy shit and her both of her parents she deaf. one up to me yeah on my upbringing. oh yeah I grew up on a farm without running water. Well, there you go. But we yeah. should, her and I should go have drinks sometime. You probably should. Yeah, both of her parents are deaf too, and so it's like that. <laughs> oh that whole my thing. god! It's, yeah, it's, it's weird. It's like such a crazy. Okay, so wait, her father's in jail for he cut a woman's throat and stabbed her five times, and she didn't die. Mm-mm. And then she testified against him. S- yes, although she said that it was her fault you know typical sort of abuse oh woman. it was it's, oh it was his girlfriend yeah it was his but not her mother but not your wife, wife's mother no, he tried to kill my wife's mother as well um but my wife was there He's trying to, to think this guy is a problem with the ladies he's starting to think he might have a couple <laughs> issues uh but well, yeah but but usually when you have a fucked up family you try to recreate that family anyway Right. So you that's why, you know, I remember one time I was working with this guy and he was always dating these fucked up chicks that would like they'd get drunk and end up at some dude's apartment and you have to go get him. And I was like, this is a nice guy. Why is he keep dating these girls? And this other guy in the office goes, oh, his mom was an alcoholic. And it just went click, click, click. <laughs> oh, I think you look for relationships that rem- that feel familiar to you, yeah. that remind you of that primary relationship. It's not like you're trying to go fuck your mother or women are trying to fuck their dad. No, it's but just... you want, like, yeah, it's oh, like if, you, if, if there's a lot of drama in your upbringing, you're like, exactly. oh, I need that. That's normal. Exactly. Like, So I, what are you bringing to this relationship? Apparently, uh, from what I'm told. You're, you I'm... really are a misogynist. Uh, aren't you? You're the opposite of what you appear. Is that <laughs> it's fair all to a say? Ruse. It's like Michael Jackson does all the stuff for the kids, you know, <laughs> yes. charity to... to uh, <laughs> no, I think... You know, no, my, but that didn't help. That was a bad. Yeah, that was probably <laughs> that not was the way. Like, <laughs> like one time there was a in L.A. There was a we'd buy pot at this place, and the front for the this was before pot was legal. Obviously, uh, the front was a um, like a, a a cannabis 
yeah. store, like where you bought like medical. No, like no. stuff for I can't, you know, um, you know, shirts that oh, were like made hemp, out of hemp, hemp and stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah. And like, that a, was their front? Yeah, so it was like such a terrible... It was either like a genius front or it was, it was a like, terrible... It was a Dorito store in the front. Uh, <laughs> yes, uh, so it was like... Um, I don't know. I think my wife and I talked about this just literally a week ago. And uh, I think she says, because I can be kind of distant and that, you know, her dad would constantly be sort of just disappearing for weeks on end and, you know, having sex with women that weren't his wife. And, and not that I And that's done what you that. do. But I, I, I guess I'm emotionally like that, I suppose. I don't know. You're emotionally distant? Perhaps. Are you? I guess. I must be. I don't know. Well, you seem like it right here in this conversation because yeah. you're not giving a, a real answer. I don't know. I don't know what the... It's funny. I'm not hiding anything. I just don't know what the real answer is. I've been to therapy for three years. I still don't know the answer. Well, what was your upbringing like? Well, I have a... My, my mother and I don't speak, and uh, she's mentally ill, and so... I have a habit of... Okay, your mother is mentally ill? Yeah, yeah. In what way? Is she in a... She has been in and out oh, okay. at, at various times. And right now, she's not, but is there, I don't Is there really a name know. for what she has? Uh, she's borderline personality. Oh, okay. Um, but she is also a grifter as well. <laughs> like, she's a crazy person who's also sort of a bad person, too, in my opinion. Okay. Um, <laughs> but uh, I don't, you know, I don't... Well, want... I think you would know. Well, I mean, it's all perspective. Do you, you have know. brothers and sisters? I had two brothers who both passed away. Oh, shit. And I knew that. <laughs> Why did I go there? No, it's okay. Oh, I don't care. It's totally not dramatic. But me. not killed by your wife's father. No, as far as I know. <laughs> unless, unless he somehow uh, made them have heart attacks or something. Oh, um, they both had heart attacks? Well, my younger brother had a heart transplant and was like supposed to die from like the first week he was alive and then finally died when he was 19. Oh, my God. And then my older brother. And how old were you when that happened? When my younger brother died, I was 27. Oh, my God. It must have been so like hard. I guess. Yeah, I mean, yes. But you were kind of prepared for it your whole life? or? Well, it was, yeah, it was a long, drawn-out thing, whereas my older brother just, just had a heart attack one day, 37, and just died, like, suddenly. So I had kind of both, where the one long, lingering one, and then the one just suddenly, he's oh gone. Oh, my God. Kind of thing. I don't know which one I would recommend. I mean, I don't recommend either of them, but uh, I think that... My older brother dying suddenly had more of a an after effect. My younger brother, when he died, I was kind of prepared for it. And so, you know, uh-huh. uh, whereas my older brother was just kind of like, whoa. Were you, you guys know. close? Close-ish. I mean, we were only two years apart. So, you know, we, you know, it was closer. It was a, the hardest thing was that uh, he was kind of the guy who dealt with my mom. Like he sort of. That's what I was going to ask about. Yeah. Like, how did, how did, how would he characterize your mother? Well, he, he was kind of, my older brother was, had sort of a very Catholic sort of martyr complex and he kind of, he would always tell me, he's like, Chris, I think she's doing better, man. I think she's really coming around this time. And I'm like, John, you're a fool. You're a fool, you know? Um, and she would constantly sort of worm her way back into his life. I mean, she's the kind of person who would just like jump from lily pad to lily pad and, you know, wherever there was sort of money and things oh, like that. Bad person. <clears throat> she's struggling like we all are. Oh. But, uh, but yeah, so. When he passed away, all of a sudden it was like, oh, no, I have to deal with this now. And I did for a few years, and then I stopped dealing with it. So what? you, you haven't talked to her for a while? I mean, we uh, I blocked her phone number a while ago, and uh, she um, the last time she, she's been uh, telling me that she's going to die for the past four years, that she's, you know, and, uh, you know, she's an older woman. At a certain point, that's going to not be a lie, so you never yes. know. Um, but I would always say... Let me talk to your doctor. Like, give me your doctor. Right. Number. She's just like, being dramatic. Me. And she never will. To get what? Just to, to get a connection, to, to kind of get back in and just eventually there would be money involved. Um, but more in the short term, just she's just one of those people that just needs to have drama with people. Right. You know, so your wife and you, though, you you have in a way a lot in common. Yeah. Strangely, we do. And it's it's uh it's very we actually have this idea for a sitcom that you know we'll never get around to doing but we well our big plan is so if anybody out there wants to steal it here it comes <laughs> well it's not really a sitcom type premise unfortunately but um eventually her dad's gonna get out of jail and this is something that oh you know coming up us. I mean he's been up for parole a couple times really but he hasn't gotten it because he doesn't admit that he did it he's the police is he a sociopath or something. Or probably, I think, yeah, on some level, he's deaf. He's a deaf mute, and so 
when the police came in. You got to hand it to the guy. Yeah. Not a lot of deaf mutes out there. Well, he's <laughs> fucking killing people. But he's a very cap- he's funny because he's kind of like the Fonzie of the deaf deaf world. Like he's a very cool guy. Like I've met him a bunch of times. We go to prison, you know. But to- do you have to know how to? My wife, Sign? my wife does, so she kind of translates. But even I can kind of pick up on it that he's funny and affable. Right. He's the kind of guy who right. always have girls in his life and stuff like that. But uh, when he gets out of jail, we're going to introduce him to my mother, and then he'll kill her, and then he'll go back to jail, and then we'll be we'll be all set. <laughs> well, you guys will be free. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh my god, <laughs> very dark. I know your real life is much darker. Than your stand up. Although your stand up is has like my stand up is underratedly well not no it's not rated, period. It's not under or overrated. <laughs> no, but it's Nobody's like, rating my stand up. But it is dark, but it doesn't seem dark. I no, mean there's right. some of the, your jokes like you have a joke that I think is so funny that where you say like you don't have a plan for uh Yeah. Y- I'm uh, just gonna spend all the money I have and then kill myself. Yeah. Like that's yeah. Not out of depression, but just because then I don't have to ever worry about money. Yeah. <laughs> Which, Instead of yeah. I don't honestly know what the problem with that philosophy is. But I mean, if I don't have kids, if you don't have kids, why should I spend all this time stressing out about money to extend my life by five miserable years in my 80s when I can just sort of enjoy my life, you know, work hard, make as much money as I can, and then just have a couple dark nights of the soul and then be done with it. (laughs) You probably, your heart is going to give out anyway. I know, exactly. (laughs) I I mean, I just know a little bit about your family history. Well, I don't know anything about your family, but I'm sure you probably discussed it all on on the show. But what's your background? No, Rich has never asked me a question (laughs) about my family. (laughs) Hang on, let's take this call. And then, uh, Terry, from Tennessee? Yeah. Uh, me and my wife, we've been fighting a lot lately about the last three years because one of my daughters has turned out, you know, to like girls. Oh, gross. Well, I don't know about that. I, I love my daughter. <laughs> She's and, joking. Uh, yeah, I know she is. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I'm about ready to give it up. I mean, we've been married 27 years. Oh, my God. Wow. Yeah, you, you've already gone past the point of really making it. No, wait. You is did this... it. I think that that's, a, you know, 10 years, that's good enough, and it, you can go at that point. Is your wife your daughter's mother, or is this a second wife? Yes. No, this is, we've been married 27 years. She's uh, the mother of all my kids. And, uh, good morning, everybody. She tells me that... Uh, <laughs> When she turns 18, that, you know, she's going to kick out of the house. And I tell her, as long as I'm paying the bills, she can stay there as long as she wants. And we've yeah. just been going round and round about it. And it just, uh, she's like, three- you guys put on your, 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 uh, cans. Cause uh, we got a call and he's, uh, he's been married 27 years. Uh-huh. Uh, that's just, uh, two years longer than you guys. Um, and, uh, and his daughter. His daughter's is, a lesbian, and they're fighting a lot. And he might get a divorce. And his wife is not having any of it. And wants to kick. The and daughter he's out. calling into the radio station for what advice? Uh, listen, Jim, I save lives. You save lives. Yes, we <gasps> give actual advice. Sir, so how long you been listening to this program? Oh, ever since you all come on uh, Opie and Anthony, I've been listening to Opie and Anthony mm-hmm. ever since I come on XM. And see, and you say to yourself, if Rich and Bonnie can make it this long, mm-hmm. they must know something. Because they don't get along at all. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so your wife doesn't like the fact that your daughter's a lesbian? No. And what does she want to do, disown her? Well, she, basically that's what it boils down to. And I just told her, you know, that uh, she, she's our family, she's our blood. And, you know, it, it might, you know, she's only 16. I told her, you know, it's a phase. it could work itself out. She might, you know. It might be just the thing she's going through. I don't know, you know. I, I just, I just feel I love my daughter, and I just want to be happy. Mm-hmm. So, and, do you uh, think you, your daughter's doing it just to piss off your wife? No, no, because they, uh, they have some big boy out fights, and, and I'm not at home a lot because I'm a truck driver. But when I'm at home, I have to. You have to mediate. Uh, yeah, I have to get between my wife and just tell her she needs to calm down and take it easy. And now, do you? Did you ever get the feeling, was this a surprise to you when your daughter came out, or was it kind of like, yeah, I kind of suspected? No, it was a surprise. And uh, She wasn't playing softball? Can I do that? Yeah, she does play softball. She does play <laughs> softball, ladies and gentlemen. Is she in the WNBA? No, but she's, All right. uh, she's got a couple of scholarship offers. Oh, that's great. Yeah. So, so she's uh, going to be successful. Lesbians do well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
I, so. I think your your wife probably needs to understand that getting mad isn't going to change it. <laughs> like it'll only make it wor- like it's not as if you know your 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 wife isn't going to like scream her into being straight you know no but uh, she will scream her into porn yes <laughs> she that will is go possible. straight into some pussy licking porn um well uh has I your guess... wife seen that macklemore song video that's oh yeah i can't change even, even if, if I, I wanted to i can i just say how delighted i am that that you are so the opposite of what i assumed you, you know like i you don't use the word delighted with a truck driver You're right i'm christian sorry. come on so, can i just so, say how fucking balls on psych <laughs> yes, i am thank yeah. you <laughs> i just um, you seem like please, a great christian dude. sound more condescending here's the I'm thing i'm so yeah. impressed oh, that shut you, up. first of all you're shut southern up. And you're a truck no, driver, but, and yet you seem to be on the right side of things. He seems like a good guy. Why wouldn't he be a it? good guy? Why wouldn't he? That's a good point. By the way, my name's Rich Voss. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs> Terry, uh, that's your name, right? Yes. Um, so if you got a divorce from your wife, though, your daughter wouldn't even be able to come live with you because you're on the road all the time driving your truck. Well, if I got a divorce, I would make sure I would quit, I'd be quitting my truck driving job and getting another job to me and her and... You know, maybe my little one, if she wants to, come live with me because I just uh, think my daughter has been uh, subjected to enough in that house. So. Right. She's yeah. she's the most important thing, which I think. I'm voting divorce on this one. <laughs> <laughs> I am. Uh, I am. I Don't say. Think, uh, it's like, not look, that you asked, how, but I how long has your wife known? Not that how long. What? How long has your wife known that or how your daughter's a lesbian? Doesn't it take time? Well, I, I guess the last couple of years she's been into this one girl. She's been seeing this one girl the last couple of years, and it just, uh, you know, those the last, you know, these last two, three years that you know she's been seeing this girl. It just, it's been a uh, pretty, pretty. So it's active. been a few years, Jim, and and she hasn't come around. Now what? Now what do you say? I well, mean, don't get me wrong. I do still love my wife, but I just, you know. But your daughter is the most. You've brought somebody into the world. That. And that's, I think that's the more important thing. Don't you think, Jeannie, that's the more important? Um, I'm just trying to, I'm just coming into the story now. So, um, so the girl is, <laughs> like, she's got to get all her facts. 16. Sorry, I got it. She's 16. She's 16. So for three years, so she was 13 when she, um, decided she was a lesbian. Decided she was lesbian. Now, was she anything before? I mean, well, she was that, a softball player. No, I understand that, but was she, she's very uh, athletic. Did, so she never went through like the boyfriend thing. That's what I'm wondering. Like, she liked this one boy, oh. and, and he basically broke her heart. And uh, oh shit! Interesting. It might, it might just be a phase. I think it might be I'm a phase. Thinking. Well, see, that's what I'm thinking. And I told my wife if we let it play out, it would work itself out. Whatever it happened. Yeah, that, that's what I guess I mean. That that yelling, like she's gonna work it out one way or the other. Your wife's negativity or positivity isn't really gonna make a difference at the end of the day. All it's gonna do is ruin a relationship with the daughter. Right. Exactly. Christian, once again, oh, I'm sorry. Knows everything. I'm so sorry for taking this man's problem seriously and not using <laughs> Good luck. his fodder. Good luck to you, Terry. Thanks By for calling. By the way, Terry, in. everything's going to be I, okay. Bonnie, I want you to know though, I, I've seen you moving. I'm a big fan, especially of your ass. Oh, so. thank you. I did You're that not. for you. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Yeah. Um, okay. So we're here with uh, Jim and Jeannie Gaffigan, mm-hmm. and uh, I did uh, your. By the way, I saw the first episode. Which is fantastic. You loved it. I loved okay. it. It was, and I, I kept saying, cause Rich was trying to watch it. I was in the car and I kept showing it to him. So we're still both alive. Uh, but it was, it, cause I kept going, you gotta watch this part. You gotta watch this part. Really? Thank you. Yes. That makes me very happy. Fabulous. And, um, when I was on set that day, yes. I was so impressed with you. I knew that. I was actually really jealous. I was like, ah, oh, I want to be that. I want to do that. I really have no idea what you're talking about, but thank you. Well, no, because no, I saw many times, I I saw many times you, well, you're the executive producer of the show. That's correct. And Jim is the star of the show. It's called the Jim Gaffigan Show, but maybe it should be called the Jeannie Gaffigan okay, Show. Okay, man, sister. Come on, ladies. No. <laughs> Jim is so angry. No. Like, I mean, I really think that it's time for Jim to get his time in the sun. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. I think after all with, these with, years. With that complexion? Jim. First of all, <laughs> it is some attention. fascinating that you're an absolutely beautiful woman, but Jim's the one that they're going to put on television. I know, right? <laughs> well, I, mean, I just right. think it's, I'm glad that Jim is finally getting his... Yeah, you're finally getting your due. Um, well, I'll just say this, and then uh, 
that I saw many times you would say to people or or say to Jim, that's not the joke. Here's the joke. And you were right. I think every time you were very specific, you, you were and you were able to tell people what to do without coming across in any way uh, like a jerk. You know, you just it's like I'm not just my ego's good at not it. in it. Do you know what I mean? It's like I just want it to be good. So yeah. I don't care if I'm right or I'm wrong. But or I think you did make it better. I think. Of, oh, uh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, it's you know, I joke around about it. But like, thank you. Genie is a genius. Yeah. And I saw it with my own this, goddamn this eyes. Whole, you know, the amazing thing is, like, we've been working on this show for years and there's something, you know, I've learned so much during this process, but one of the things that I have learned, because as a, as a male comedian, there's the female. Is that you know, what like, you're telling yeah. people now? <laughs> no, but you know, like, the whole thing of like, you know, uh, women are considered funny. You know, it's like, yes. it's never been a debate. I grew up watching Carol Burnett. Right. And like, like this notion of, you know, it's like, yeah, I'm not saying it's the same situation if we went, if all th- four of us went uh, on stage at Poughkeepsie at 11 o'clock at night. I'm not saying it's the same thing. But like the whole notion of like sexism in the entertainment industry, I witnessed it. First hand for three years. But you probably didn't think it existed before. I didn't. But what do you mean you what witnessed? How did you witness it for three I years? I witnessed, you know, we could recount stories. I but, also, by the way, before yeah. we go on with this, I just want to let you know that I am so not like want to jump up on a soapbox right now because it's like you, I don't want to drum up. I like know what you negative. mean. You like it's like. Uh, it's, I don't want to be like the one to be like. I've experienced sexism in the workplace. You know. Yeah. But it's it like, sucks that you can't get on the soapbox without. You, you know what I mean? Like yeah. like if, if somebody was punching me in the face constantly, I wouldn't be like. Well, I don't want to be the dick who asks people to stop punching me in the face. Like you know, I don't want to be that guy. It's, you right. Know, yeah, but I will true. say this. And and uh, as a as a lady in the business, um, in the business. <laughs> I was born You're a woman. Joan. A lot of people don't know that. Um, no, I. I do see that it's hard for different kinds of people. Like yes. it's it's a hard business, you know. Yeah. I mean, there you see very talented uh, people who seem like they should get their shots, and they don't. And sometimes there's no reason for it. Like at least with women, you can po- sometimes point to it and be like, "I think it's because she's a lady." No, but yeah, and that's the thing. Look, there are monsters in this business. You, the amount of cruelty that that we have to navigate, it, you know, as an individual, in is pretty severe, but I'm saying I've navigated the bullshit and mm-hmm. I've created my own bullshit. But I've heard it's a like few stories. Some of the <laughs> some of the the shit that Jeannie had to deal with. Can I, can was... you just tell some of it? I'm right, fascinated. So, right. so here's the thing. Like obviously, like I've pretty much known everyone in this room for a really long time. Like right. I knew Christian before I knew Jim. I met Bonnie like. Very early as you I was at Christian your wedding, you guys. Yes. Like I don't know mine. if you ever got my wedding gift, but it's uh, <laughs> it's, it's, in the mail. It? it's in the mail. I think you have 20 years. Sherry's <laughs> berries. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like if you guys been married. We 10 did years. get a few things without a label on them, like that. Oh, that was my, that was mine. <laughs> okay, great. So, um, just certain things like I feel like sometimes because Jim's obviously a really well known person, and I think that sometimes when I'm with Jim and I go into a situation and people don't know who I am, they assume something about me that's, um, you know, kind of ridiculous. So that like, you're like a gold digger or that you married him for his fame or something like, like I that. just met or, you know, he, like I'm kind of, you know, just hanging around like I'm a groupie or something. And it's happened to me on several times where I've been um, involved in like, you know, producing for a long time. And you know, we'll like write something. But I you were also in the business before Jim. Yeah. No, I mean, I before was, you met Jim. But mm-hmm. I don't really feel like I didn't really experience sexism. I mean, I, I we talked about it a little bit recently because I feel like our daughter should know about sexism mm-hmm. because, um, like, I, I don't think that she should know about like you know pornography and stuff like that. But like, oh, I, I, I teach my daughter that. I'm sure you do. <laughs> but I, you know, like I was kind of, you know, telling Jim like, why are you downloading these songs? From iTunes without screening the lyrics because we're in the car and all and we have all the kids in the car and yeah. it's like all of a sudden these filthy lyrics come out and my kids are older now so they totally start giggling and they yeah. they know it and um, Jim's just like oh come on they have to like learn somehow mm-hmm. and it's really liberal about these but he, I think he was just like kind of covering that he didn't yeah, buy the clean version it, it's like but then wait I'm just getting to the point here so then. Later, don't I you start... talk to him like that? No, I'm sorry. sorry. <laughs> Later, I get to a point where I'm talking about, um, uh, you know, experiencing sexism, 
before uh, I met Jim. Because we were talking about sexism, uh-huh. um, because I recently experienced some. And I said before it was more like if I was like in a sketch group and like at the Christmas party, like someone got drunk and like cornered me and they were just like, you know, hit on me. And I was like, no. And then all of a sudden I wasn't in any sketches anymore. Like that was the yes. type of stuff yes. that I was yes. used to. Or, um, you know, like when when I like got married, I kind of was not as attractive anymore to like... You know, audition. right? People stopped asking you that. To... There's not that mystery. Maybe something could happen. Yeah, from it's this. weird. I mean, it's just that. So she there likes was... me. She is nice to me. Yeah, yeah. it was just kind of like you know, uh, it was just kind of this weird thing. But then when I started going into like this sort of like boys club, because I'm very, very often the only female in the room, right? Which is great in a lot of ways until. Sometimes I'm mistaken for like a groupie, and what's happened? To oh me before God, is that would be so annoying. It just happens, like in in terms of like, I'll be like on an email chain for like a, a month, and clearly like you know producing, and then I'll show up at the you know shoot or whatever, and people will be like, um, thanks for visiting the set, and like there's a chair over here, and we can get, and I'm just like, I'm not visiting, I'm like, I'm the executive producer. It, it's not on this show, but it's on other right. things that mm-hmm. we've done. And, um, but most of the time, it's usually like, I was in um, LA like two years ago, and I flew to LA for a table read of something with a um, that new, we wrote. new baby that we wrote, <laughs> and I um, was walking through the parking lot, and I met up with an, another producer who is like barely known to me, who's like making like ten times as much money as I am for not doing anything, yeah. which is the way it, it, it goes. And he said to the other person, he said, "Oh hi." And then he said, "And I, I have to tell you because we're going to figure that out at the table read." And I said, "What's that?" And he said, "It's a you know, a time where <laughs> people sit down at a table and oh read no, the no, script. no 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 no." And I go, no, I know what a table read is. I was just wondering what we we're going to find out at the and, table. And by the but way, I had but to also, explain. also, that's so funny that anyone might not know those two words together. I mean, I was like, literally, you would have to be a caveman to yeah. not well, know the know, table and read meant what to sit is at a table, table and read, read something. Yeah, but, but, I know big ball of fire, rise in sky, and table yeah, read no, mean it's, it's, and these read are the script ones, at table. Like, I love the one where we were shooting a scene. <laughs> That's like saying, like, we'll take care of that in the automobile, and you're like, what is that? It's a thing that, that you drive. <laughs> There's a there's four wheels, but there's a wheel in the middle that you steer with. See, but that's but, you can put that in the script. That's fair. But that's so was, funny. There was uh, my favorite is uh, the one where we were. Where Jenny was describing. She was like, "I definitely want. We definitely want a two shot when we're shooting the couple on the subway because in the pilot there was a lot of singles and we wanted a two shot." And the director goes, "Hey, why don't I?" worry about the shots and you worry about the, what the genie character is gonna wear no no i can't believe you just told that story like that's like so is he still secret. the director okay no 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 la 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 you can't say stuff like that on the radio i'm not identifying the name oh, oh, oh but, i think you're mistaking this for a show people listen to oh no, okay, but no let's let's tell it all we're talking not, about dave johnson no, here's, 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 dave here's johnson. my point yes. my point is <laughs> that uh Again, this is happening over the span of years, and we've all eaten so much shit. But I there's a difference care. between eating shit, there's a difference between creating your own shit, and then there's stuff where you're like, oh, that's just because she's a yes, woman. Yes, yes. And the most fascinating thing, I think, is that a lot of these, well, they're men, right? They are liberal guys. Yeah. Like, they <laughs> yes, are yes. equal pay. They love Madeline Albright. Right, you know, right, they, right. No, they're just completely... <laughs> you know I mean? no. a random person you're going to no. pick. It's like, when I... I remember I was shooting this other thing, and I said something like, did we ever... Like, we had a thing where the women were walking down the street, and one starts, and the next one joins, the next one joins, the next one joins. And I said, did we ever show the reveal of the um, the last woman joining? Or did we just kind of pick... Uh, pick up you yeah, know when yeah. she joined and um he was like well we're um we're doing it with a pan shot and i'm like are we gonna um I, he said something like he was like a pan is when the camera passes oh my over. god that would and be i was so like annoying. i can't like i was like i felt it coming but are you mean back because i know when I i'm in a situation i'm such a cunt all the time oh, like yeah. people never mistake me for but just being there the thing. i was too <laughs> nice over all these years like i was like i don't want to rock the boat and whatever and he'd hear about it but i was very nice and i think that when it came 
to that one time where I the um the director said to me who it was like the first day I met him and when he said to me um I want what I want you to do is I want you to pick a really amazing outfit for the genie oh, character to wear. So and cool. I said you know what I think you should pick out the outfit for the genie character to wear because I feel like you have really good taste in women's clothes yes. Yes. and I was just like immediately like I was like I'm just not doing this yes. like yeah. and so um, but then, they, when, they, I, when, they I, when I say better. step back to men, sometimes they go, "Whoa, like, yeah. hey, well, yeah, take he did it that. easy." Yeah, when you're talking about the, cool. the liberal sexism, it, it, I think what it is is that you know, as a guy, I know that it's women, men hate to feel embarrassed by women, like humiliated. And when when a guy feels like he's oh, being, shit. that's why men don't like me. emasculated. <laughs> just that lizard brain comes out, no matter <laughs> how it's liberal absolutely- you are. Christian, you are so smart. Phone. I'm calling know, you all the time. I know. I'm no, very but it's smart. so true because I feel I see it too. Because it's like that's where the sexism comes yeah. in. Because it's like people have egos anyway, especially in this industry. People are like, I want to be the one who, who makes the right choice in this scene yeah. or whatever. And I really don't care. But I see when I because obviously I know my my husband is in every single scene. So there's like a, a third eye element that like. Uh, he cannot have the perspective on yes. the scene that I can. I'm at the monitor all the time, right. but it's like we wrote it, we yeah. thought about it, we debated it, we got notes from people. They were like, yes, no, like, that's not funny. That So I've been living with it and breathing it uh, for so long. And then someone just comes in and, like, you know, is kind of putting it on its feet. <laughs> and yeah. I, I'm just saying that, like, I see it happen where I'll come in and I'll say, well... The whole thing is, is that the joke is the location is the punchline. Right. So it's like, so it's like, oh, where could he be? And then cut to the exterior, yes. right? Yeah. And the and the director's setting it up like it's cut to the people pointing out the exterior. Right, the right, 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 right. And then so I'm just like in in. I just feel like we just have to get that exterior. Like, that's just... And so, that. like, here's the thing. And Here. they're like, well, you could do that, too. And I'm Ugh. like, don't act and like... And so here's where, here's where I come in and I go... Just do it the way I want it. Yeah, he's yeah. like that. Just and I'm stop much more it. of a negotiator. Like it's, it's just, some of it is just over twenty years of eating shit. It's yes. like look, well, t- stop it. Let's Tammy- stop acting like we all are geniuses here. It's like this is we're shooting this. The DP is making it beautiful. You're the traffic right. cop. Let's do this. Well, I, you when, can do I, when I work on shows or job. something, I'm always, I feel like I'm always saying this. I'm like, I'm only good at one thing is being funny. That's the only thing I'm good at. So just, you can do everything else. But when it comes to what's funny, like I am the expert here. I'm the only one that knows. So what's that Seinfeld quote? He's like, you know, these are not creative people. This is not what they do. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, yeah. um, I also think that, and I don't know if this is an excuse for men or just an explanation. I think that men are shitty to women in the workplace because they feel emasculated in their personal lives. And so they feel dominated by women at home. Oh, really? And so therefore, oh, that's deep. and so therefore in the public sphere, it's like, no, 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 no. You don't get here. That's this is my so great, place. Because you know, I take it place. so personally. And now I have a whole new perspective. It's probably way more about his wife than it is about you. But I don't feel honestly, like, I don't feel like I get like, I don't know. I mean, when people are shitty to me, I just think it's because I have a, a, a warped attitude. Yes, no. <laughs> like I think, I think people are re- responding because I'm sometimes I'm just too. We don't have to pick just one here. Yeah, you know, like yeah, like <laughs> I don't <laughs> feel like it's because I'm a woman. I mean, one time recently, I was like, I was sort of you know rocked back on my heels because I was like, is that because I'm a woman? But that's like it. It almost never happens well, where for the record, I think we're, we're not presuming here that that. When women deal with me, that you guys are being completely gender blind oh, either. Do you know by what I mean? Way, it's like there might the be a way you address me that you way, wouldn't there, address. There, a woman. I think I think you're cute. Now just shush, by shush, the way, shush. there is yeah, there is definitely. <laughs> look, I mean, there's also as I human know, beings or Americans, maybe. I think that we love good looking people. Like a good looking person comes up with an idea, and we're like, maybe Jim hates good looking. Like, are you for pound. real? Jim is so Absolutely. angry. Absolutely, he is thinks. The, that is a bigotry we'll be dealing with in no, 20 years. No, I don't think. That Absolutely. Are you I, fucking I kidding almost, me? I almost write off good-looking people, especially I, I when it comes to comedy. I agree with I, her. I, I, they I, have well, to prove do, themselves. You do. You're, you're, you and Christian are cynical comedians. You're doubtful of people. Right. I'm talking in a general yeah, sense. Yeah, but there's, there's not... You don't think of somebody. Why are newscasters all good looking? Why is every case? But those aren't the smartest people on the planet. They just read a teleprompter. But because people want to look at good looking people. Okay, I I agree with that. But I think that though good looking people are not taken seriously, you know, because there is a bias of you are only good looking. 
you know, I think, well, I think women just in general on television are good looking. My daughter, when she was very little, she said, how come there's so many old men on TV and no old women? I was like, yeah. oh, my God. Like, <laughs> she notices that at age three. But, but by the way, it's like, you know, we're talking about, uh, you know. So now some... she just watches uh, Van Strusten. What's her name from? <laughs> Greta Van Strusten. Greta. Greta Van... <laughs> I, couldn't know I love Greta. I love Greta. But, no. um. <laughs> The thing about it's hard to you know this journey trip. that we've been on, you know, sexism was was pretty interesting reveal. But there's also, I mean, the the television system. I know, like for thirty years, it's broken. You know, it's like Patton did his speech where it's like, hey, it's all over. We've got iPhones and all that. Yes. But it really is like having developed for you know first genie and i developing at nbc and then way before that us having a script deal at fox and then us going through the mill twice at cbs and then having this sense of freedom where like i you know i literally said i'd like uh these 12 comics in the scene so if you tried to do that at a network show they'd be like what yeah. you know but like they're like okay fine you get 12 yeah, twelve comedians. What's it, what does it air on TV? Is it TV, TV Live? And then it goes to Comedy Central. Is yeah, it'll re-air th- okay. within the week. Like it's like it will air on Comedy on uh, TV Land, and then the same episode will air on Comedy Central. But then the next installment will air on TV Land. Okay. So the, it will repeat it's, on Comedy Central. It's intentionally sort of like so his, Comedy Central people. Yeah, like his demographic is not necessarily the same demographic as TV land, right? Right, right. So the idea is is that it's just a, it's a show. You know what I right. mean? So it's like not I think it's kind of brilliant. It is. I think it's great, yeah. It was actually Doug's idea, wasn't it? Um anyway, so uh well, there seems to be some uh, marriage. It was Jim Gaffigan's uh, idea. No, but anyway, but so, eyeballing with each but, other. No, wait, no, so, uh private yeah. joke wait, among so the I two just want to say that this whole sexism thing has nothing to do with my experience at TV Land. TV Land like gave like Jeannie Gaffigan like the damn crown and the yes. I mean, I'm not kidding. Like it was yeah. like I have so much respect over there because it was like it's just like what you do is like earns you respect. Like if you are like um a jerk and like stupid, mm. you don't get any respect. That's but you Whereas get things in done. Hollywood, yeah, the the biggest <laughs> remind me not and, to go over to T V land. <laughs> no, but I'll tell you something. In but Hollywood that's, what, that doesn't apply. But that's no, I know, jerks, right? That's like, what I was gonna say is that, you know, you know, through this process, um there is something about, you know, uh, seeing this this sexism, which was fascinating, right? These very liberal guys and you're like but you're doing that. But so the whole structure of the entertainment industry, it's a feudal system. It's like, there is the director. There is, I'm number one on right. the call sheet. It's absurd. Right. You've worked on shows. You know exactly but what I'm TV, talking about. But in TV, it gets so muddled because there's so many producers and there's so many executive producers and then co-executive producers. And then and every single is one the of those director people has to justify that, their job. Yeah, yes. and it's like... The, the, the this guy wrote the episode, so now he has stuff to say about. It. It's like it's it's an endless amount of. I, I mean, I know from the very few times that I've actually been acting on a television show where it, it's like so many people are telling you it's stuff. Insane. It's crazy. It's insane. A lot of the times, the people who are you know um, getting titles for stuff are because they made some deal like ten years ago. It's like so weird. People, uh, there's there are people in that without naming names. There are people who are what I consider barnacles. You know, people who oh, just right, somehow absolutely. manage to stay in the in Is the it world. Jim? You know, no, Most of them are former <laughs> glad agents. you said it. No, um, but yeah. I wonder, like, how do you still keep getting jobs? You've because never they succeeded made anywhere. Some smart business deal, like a long time ago. And but there are just... certain people. I don't know that they've ever had any no, success. No, they, they like, never I have. Look, I, no, I also they, they were agents and stuff, and they figured out how to well, that's like, like get your, your name yes. on the thing and make the money. So you don't have to do pay them ten percent or fifteen or whatever. They instead get a credit on the thing. Mm-hmm. So a lot but of them don't even get, get to be on the set. They get like they game the banned system. from the set, but they get checks. Yeah. They get checks. Oh, they right. get checks. Yeah. I will say, you know, I was on this uh, this show on our uh, on uh, TBS. Are we there yet? And we shot a hundred episodes, and uh, I was probably in like eighty five of them. And it shot up in Stamford, Connecticut, which is ridiculous. And it's not, you know, it was certainly not the coolest, hippest, you know, Parks and Rec or something like that. It is a show that none of my friends watched. It wasn't really made. It's a black family television show. But it was so refreshingly, there was a lot of bullshit. There's always a lot of bullshit. But compared to other TV shows, the fact that we were in Stamford, almost in this little, like, biodome, that yeah. there was no 
you know, nobody thinks they're cool in Stanford, Connecticut. And so there, there was a refreshing right. lack of the, no, industry people from the network like rarely came up because they're not coming up to Stanford. So we were kind of left by ourselves and it ended up being a much more, uh, whereas I've done, you know, five minutes on a quote unquote big show or whatever. And it's just ridiculous. I, I had one line in the movie night and day, uh, that, oh yes, Tom Cameron Cruise, Diaz. Yeah. yeah. And it, they probably wasted $5,000 on me. Just oh, yeah. by the time, you know, they rewrote the script a bunch of times. They had to keep me three days longer than they wanted to. And, and, and it was just so much waste and so many people who were just doing nothing. Yeah. Well, it's cr- Cause now you, your show would be considered like a smaller budget show, right? Cause it seemed not for TV. Land. It's not. Oh, it's, it's cause it seemed huge to me. Well, it, yeah, it's incredible. Like, it's one we're of like those making up movies. Like well, yes, it's yeah. really serious. Like yeah. we have a great budget. Yeah. It's unbelievable. Oh, okay. It's, it's really, you know, cause. There was Jeannie and I were were given the opportunity to go to Comedy Central or go to these other places and do a show, but we were a long convinced time ago. to go for the 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 uh, syndication. I always yes. knew it was bad. And I so, always knew it was bad. It was, so because I I <laughs> worked with people so... and they're like they're like that syndication money. Is generational money. They were like, right. you will ne- your children's children's children will never. And, and I was so, like, don't like the idea. And so terrified of selling but, soul to devil. But so right. what? The, yes. what and I was, look, I was I was on a show and I was like, I'm not interested in television. I, I enjoy stand up. It's very rewarding. I don't want to do it. But there was some, you know, people were convinced, like, look, now you have you can get what you want on one of these network shows. You can. Get what you want. You can write it. You can write it with Jeannie. You can do all these things. And it was all a lie. Bull- but, oh, right. but we went into it. So So knowing, what did they do? Put some a writer with you that Well here's here's what I was gonna get to. Oh, what sorry. I was gonna get to is that so we had this network model with network money and then they put it on cable. So we didn't get the money we would get if we just went to TV land with the show. Oh. We got the network money and we had the network but budget. But it's like we took, like we would, there's no back end. There's no like syndication model. There's well, syndication's no, dead anyway. Well, that, much. but that was what everyone's looking for. That right? was, everyone wants the hundred episodes. Syndication's dead? No, but it's on its way it's, out. But it's, it's not the, the paying my rent right now. The conventional <laughs> I didn't know form that. of it is, I mean, well, the, there's the hundred episode deals, but it's, it's going to change. I mean, we're we're like a couple years. I mean, take it from me. I know nothing, but we're a couple you years away from. You sound so like, smart right now. He always says that. Fifty cents. <laughs> you know, it's like what percentage of shows do you watch on Netflix or on demand? I would say everything yes, I watch yes. outside of the NFL because right. I'm a guy. So, <laughs> but but at the same time, there's still this kind of appeal of making some deal, and then people don't. They have like a billion dollars, and they never have to work again because they're some producer, some executive producer on like two and a half men or whatever they just yeah you know make millions of dollars it's so weird nothing. though because i i can't get motivated over money for whatever reason it's yeah. just not in my but it thing wasn't, it wasn't necessarily it wasn't necessarily money that was the sweet end of it the the thing was like because i've done show it's like look you go in it's jim gaffigan genie gaffigan and We'll add this person, and then who's like boom. a you know who's like a star, right? You know, yeah. you, you need can a pick star, them. right? Yes, you need someone who's been around <laughs> like forever. Phil but here's the deal, came, right. you know. And there were there were there were quarters and suitors and all this. And the reality is, is what Jeannie and I do now. Like it was a gift that it's just us. I mean, we there's other people that help, but it was a gift that we didn't have that that grandfather. Like we were forced to headline. You know, but, like when you're middling, you're like, this is great. I don't even know if I want to headline. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then when you're forced to headline, it's terrifying for a little bit. And then you're like, well, I want to headline. Well, no, it's like, you but know? listen, so we, I mean, I have a different perspective than Jim. In my opinion, we, it was great for us to work with an old pro. Like, it was great. I mean, even having conversations with Phil Rosenthal on the phone was oh, like yeah. really Who was, uh, everybody loves Raymond. Right. Yeah. But he, like, couldn't, like, we didn't, we ultimately didn't want to wind up going with him because he couldn't get over the fact that we wanted to have four kids. This and he is was back like, on the, now we have five. Now we have five. But he was like, no, no one's going to buy four kids in Manhattan. It's like, I don't like, see that like, working. I, and I'm like, but on Raymond, there were kids running. He goes, yeah, but this is Manhattan. And like, what? Well, and it's, it's kind of almost what makes the show 
That's the only thing I get. It's, 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 it's so show. quirky. Yeah, yeah no, it's, it's like, like <laughs> it's like who cares if they have two kids or three kids? Really? Like, I mean, I, if I would have been like, have you guys thought of doing it with eight kids? <laughs> like, yeah. like, eight is <laughs> enough. Yeah, um, eight is enough too. But so I really learned a lot, and I learned a lot from the showrunner that we, you know, uh, were with, working with at CBS. And huh. but the point is, is that once you kind of get into that whole thing, you start saying, okay, well now let's talk about we're getting the show in the air. No, who's who? Are we, who's the person who's the stories by? Who's the person that's created it's, it's... by? Who's all this stuff? And it's certainly not Jeannie Gaffigan. You know what I mean? Like Jeannie Gaffigan is not. Like, it turns involved. into that gig. What in the in the other model? You're saying? Yep. And so, especially since Jim and I brought as a writing team, we brought a pilot to NBC and sold a pilot to NBC as well as we did to Fox years ago. And we sold it and they bought it and ultimately didn't make it. And I think that we were. They made Sarah Silverman that year and they made Roseanne Barr. Oh, NBC. Yeah. At NBC. And Sarah's show and, was an amazing. And we read I it. heard we're that like, it was fantastic. We we're like, oh no, we're never going to get made, and we didn't get made. But they bought our script, so then they owned our script. So, but it's life rights, so it's so as we we, that. we can do you know another version of it, but we have to change this and that and whatever. So once we made the deal with Sony and CBS, and this is like some real you know truth telling here. Um, Basically, I this was is told. An exclusive, ladies this and is an gentlemen. exclusive. Je- Jeannie is leaning next to a bridge with a match right now. <laughs> I am. <laughs> I, don't, and I don't give a damn. I don't either. I don't give a damn because you know what? I don't need any of these people. I. This is the last TV show I will ever do. Unless it's like another Unless. version of it. I will never go back we'll to Hollywood see. and try to get a job on another TV oh. show. Yeah, by the In way, my life, I'm burning the bridge. Right. And I'm burning it for him too. So, yeah, Jim's like, and he doesn't we're care. a team, no. Jim. He doesn't care. He doesn't care. I He's, don't care. At all. I've care. told him that he does not care. No, no literally. He, no, you know what? I've informed you know what, Christian? No, I care I, less than her. You know what, Christian? I wish that was true, but he told me that I don't care. And I was like, Are you? What about this and that? And he's just like, I don't care. Yeah. So the whole thing is, it was so liberating for me to hear that he, he doesn't care. So what happened was, and this is truth be told, we made this deal at CBS, which somehow became a deal between Jim and, like, somehow I got boxed out, right? So then I went back to the table with Jim and said, you know, where where do I fit into this model? Because I'm doing everything, right? Mm-hmm. I'm doing everything. And it was like, well, here's the thing. Since you're a credited writer on this NBC thing, and we have to be very careful about getting sued by, by NBC, you, since you're a writer on that one, you cannot appear as a writer on the CBS version of it. And I'm like, but Jim can appear as a writer on it. And they're like, yeah, but he, it's, it's the Jim Gaffigan show. So Yeah, it's the Jim Gaffigan and, show with the character named Jeannie Gaffigan in it. Right. <laughs> Why but, and I, I mean, I called a lawyer and she's like, well, you know, let's not rock because everyone wants the money. Right. Yeah. So it's yeah. like, don't. They want the money and more I was than like, you yes, do. Oh, yeah, yes, because absolutely. They, don't, they don't have, they don't have any Your product. And care. I was like, well, well, you know, and then I was like, well, I guess I'm just going to take it for the team because it's like, it's just the pilot. It's just the pilot. From then on, such, you're such, free. Such bullshit. Right? And then, so then it goes into it. And I'm just like, so wh- what is my, where am I in the credits then? Because I am like on the set every day. I'm at every casting session. I have like he- department heads coming into my home, measuring, going in my closet. How does she do it with five kids in a two bedroom? Like it was literally like, I mean, down to, I mean, it was not just me being, okay, anyway, I'm going to have a cocktail and you do it. I'm like, okay, this is the way I roll. Like, I was designing everything. Right. And so, um, like, handing people their jobs. And um, I was happily doing it because I'm like, this is creative control. Right. But it's going to be Jim's name on it. Right. And that I've been used to that for you. I've never asked for anything. I've never like, you know, let's do, um, you know, uh, King Baby by Jim and Jeannie Gaffigan. Right. I I understand that, like, when you're married, like, you're on the same in the same car. And it's like if someone's driving the car and you're helping, it's like you're together. And it's like, why would I want to undermine yeah. And his his life his career by being like well I want a credit and I'm going to cause problems even right we, even though it would be completely you uh, did you do have a credit on King Baby you have a credit on all no 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 I'm saying yeah. no and I'm on saying the front like, cover, if, like, if they know, weren't yeah. going to give her she's no no, no I'm saying oh, what I'm saying is it's like it's not I'm not like all right I executive produced all yeah. the specials but I wasn't like going on tour being like I'm actually you know I should be credited with Jim Gaffigan. see I think of it like you, that he is in sync and you are his Lou Pearlman. 
or you know, his Svengali producer. Uh, I have no idea. No, you know, that was the guy who ended up having to leave the country because he molested boys. I would say, (laughs) oh yeah, I I molest boys all the time. No, I mean, but you know how like they have those pop stars. They have like the Svengali behind the scenes kind of you know running their career for them. I'm not. I have no talents. None at all. I have to say something here. He like let me say something. The stand up is all Jim. Like I am a co producer of stand-up in terms of like it's Jim's point of view. I'm writing for Jim's point of view. Jeannie Gavigan's point of view is a very different than Jim Gavigan's point of view, yeah. but I've developed such a close relationship with Jim that I understand how you know his voice. I feel it's about french fries and stuff and, and <laughs> I can... I, I'm gonna guess positive. Um, yeah. <laughs> can we pick this up right because we'll just go to a break, very we quick break, break and then we'll I want to definitely right with the my talk life more uh, with, with Rick a, a couple that obviously get along much better than Rich and I. <laughs> <laughs> and and Vinny, where do you want to plug something? Rich is really into plugs. Um, you know, if, if people, you know, after the show, if they can go to jimgaffigan.com and watch the episode. You only the, have the first episode available. Just the first episode. It's not even the first episode. It's like one of the middle episodes. Oh. But it's the first episode that's. But out it's there. only there till the end of the week. So you got to oh watch gosh. it. Oh my Yeah, go watch it. It's very funny. Um, and uh, Christian Finnegan it has a consulting uh, producer yes, credit. Yes, that is true. And was it difficult to get that producing credit? We'll talk about that after the break. <laughs> Who did you Cr- have to sleep with? Christian, where are you? Coming up. Anywhere? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought. Oh, I thought we were, we left. Uh, you know, no, I'm nowhere. What about QE? I'm seriously. Oh, you don't wanna... Well, I, I do want to plug my uh, my wife's venue. But, yes. Uh, you know, if if anyone is in uh, New York City, specifically uh, Queens, my uh, my wife and I own a small little performance venue called QED, and uh, it's QEDAstoria.com. It's classes and workshops and shows at night. It's and like a little community club. space. Yeah. yeah. It's awesome. Well, well this is good. We're 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 plugging our our spouses' things because I got to plug you know riches. I think Cobblehead can work. This <laughs> Friday through Sunday, Ventura Comedy Club. That's where Rich is going to be. He's on oh. a plane headed there now. Look at, he made me plug at least three times. He says, three. Plug it at least three times. Buddy. Look, you got to plug it. I got to fill the room. Doing a door deal. Okay, Friday through Sunday, go to Ventura Comedy Club in Ventura, California. We'll be right back. It's the Sideshow. Voss and Bonnie are back. This is My Wife Hates Me. Um, this is my wife. Welcome hates back, me. everybody. <laughs> Thank you for taking over. I, I think it's like, like like how everyone has a Christopher Walken impression. I think like every comedian has a Voss impression. Yeah. Just, just suck my dick, all right? Who does the Voss impression the best? Oh, not I, not me. I, 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 I I've heard. I, I know ten people I don't do, do it. it. Who does it? Uh, it's how, how, uh, how, how's your dog? Oh, <laughs> See, I, mine um, sounds like Richard Nixon. I sometimes when Rich is yelling at me, I think of somebody else doing an impression of him. Like it's oh, it's like he's funny. now <laughs> taken on like an impression. Who does who does an amazing impression of a lot of Please people? Please don't ask me. Right? Is it too much? Or okay, I remember his name fly. right oh, now. I, I what if he heard a, a me tough say crowd. that? It's like they would just go round robin. You know, it would be Colin would do it, and then you know Geraldo would do it. Like everybody would just start doing boss impressions. The thing is, that's not a good one. <laughs> Can't do it. <laughs> I can't do my, suck my dick. Um, that's about okay. So we're here. Uh, everyone, go around the room and say your name. A little something about yourself. Felipe Ortega. <laughs> Thank you. My name's Madeline Albright. <laughs> um, that's the second time he's called himself Madeline yes. Albright today. I'm Jeannie Gaffigan. You have a Madeline Albright esqueness about you. She was the first female Secretary of State. You're such a feminist. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Why a great shouldn't a guy segue. be a feminist and pander? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I think I love when people are like you know what? I'm somebody who's against race. Everyone's against racism. You know what I mean? It's no, like, is that true? Oh come on! You even he's just talking about like comedians that go on stage. Oh, and well, they'll like, say something oh, self-evident oh, as I if it's revolutionary. Yeah. That's my worst. Is like preaching to the choir. Is yeah. I think that's not even comedy. That's what he's talking. Yes. About. You know what? Yeah. I'm against ISIS. He's like, I'm against bad people. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. Yes. Kara Welker, my manager, called uh, called that clapter, which I think is a great. Oh, that's fantastic. A great word. <laughs> well, sometimes I've heard people say like, um. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, they start talking about the troops or something. Oh, and they yeah. get exci- like I go oh, running in, like, how are they gonna do this? And then they're like, they just get an applause break and move on to the next thing. You're like, oh, that's you illegal. That should be illegal com- in yeah, it's comedy. Like free uh, goodwill. It's you know, like I you- joke around a lot up here, but really, people. <laughs> Oh, there's nothing worse at the end of the set than like the one love. Like we gotta, we gotta, you know, 
you know, the, the, the guys, we got to come together. It's a you know, crazy world. You know, I joke around and I ridicule midgets for an hour, but I love them. Uh, yeah, well, I saw I hate a comedian. Midget jokes. I, that, they got to end. Yes. They it's have awful. to end. And I will say, you know, everybody has the cult of Bill Hicks, and I, I guess just because I have a contrarian nature and I hate groupthink, it's like. Bill Hicks did that crap all the time. He would yeah. always end his set with some big, you know, where, you know, a future where everyone loves each other. Oh, shut up. Did he? Yeah. 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 And, and one of his big specials, he, he did. said faggot like 15 times. Yeah, yeah. That's, well, that's another guy who in a weird it. way, that's how stupid just general, you know, people are, uh, myself included, is that you fall for it. It's like when Louis C.K. was doing the, the SNL thing and, and the part where he goes... You know, people were like, oh, he goes, how do you think I feel? This is probably my last time I'm ever going to do stand up or whatever he said. Mm-hmm. And then people are right. Even he knew. It's like, no, he's joking. <laughs> because these people are <laughs> like, humor. Deficient. But people fall. They fall for it. They're like, if you, you know, s- s- go, oh, this sounds a little crazy. But then people are like, "Uh oh, so this sounds crazy. Like they believe everything that you say. It's pretty Bl- weird. Bloggers should be just put on a piece of ice and pushed down to the ocean. <laughs> Unless you're blogging about this show. Of course. Unless you're blogging in a positive way. Jim yes. Gaffigan here yes. with Jeannie Gaffigan, ex- oh, his executive here. producer. Yeah. Um, I've said this before on the show, and I, I don't want this to come across wrong. <laughs> but think I think I'm that fat. you're I think you're underrated as a comedian. Oh, like well, I thank know you. that you're obviously people love your beloved and and people think you're fantastic, but I don't think people think you're fantastic enough. He oh, can't well, break thank through you. that glass ceiling. Yeah, clean comedy. You know what? Well, is that what it is? Yeah, no, here's the because thing. It, what you, know you what do is. is I feel like you do this thing that comedians want to do and can't do, which is write jokes about things you believe in. It you they're all jokes. You never yes. really just kind of go off into something. Well, I'm just going to be real here for a second and tell you. It's it's all jokes, but it all makes it's all real to what's going on in your life. You, it's hard to Thank do, you. people. No, it's you know you know what was really weird is like I remember I did uh, Beyond the Pale. I I did all these. I toured doing theaters, and I came back, and I was like uh, doing a new special, and I was like, yeah. So hopefully we'll get something in Time Out. Maybe Time Out will do an article, and they're like, Time Out doesn't want to interview, and I'm like, why wouldn't they want to interview? <laughs> Yeah. And they were like, because I was too mainstream. Because oh. it was just, you know, Republicans like him. So, therefore. Do was, Republicans like him? I didn't know that I before think, I said it. It's just everyone is bacon. You know what I mean? Like, you can't so have like, a niche well, there's audience. There's nothing exclusive you. about what you do, which is I why. I really wanted to name one of my specials Streme de Main, which is French for mainstream. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> just because it's like the worst crime. My dad. Well, it's like just because people like you, that doesn't. I mean, but that's also, a crazy thing to say. Like a lot you, of people who write for like Time Out and stuff, like they they won't admit this, but they have an internal bias against comedians who do well a lot, right? <laughs> and they yeah. have an internal bias against club comedians, what they perceive to be like the club world, as opposed to you know, oh no no, the the comedian who the world needs to know about is at the shitty bar in Brooklyn, not right. headlining right. a theater, right. you know? Right. right. It's like the the edgy niche audience like the, the 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 smart hip crowd but we 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 have an episode where we deal with that i know dave, but we can't talk about it dave the dave character which is this combination yes, there's well, a little rich in there he's even. really good and yeah, he's, he's great, great right yeah, he's great. and it's so because we auditioned a lot of comedians and then we genie and i took this interview with adam goldberg and Jeannie kept elbowing me. She was like, that's Geraldo. That's Merritt. And just who was, was talking like, and complaining. Like, well, he's, well, he's, 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 he's mocking channels. that, though, too. But, he, but he's, he's that, such like, a comedian. But he's such a comedian. Like, Absolutely. His personality is such the personality of a comedian. Yeah. Have you seen not- Days Confused? I mean, his character basically does stand-up for the entire movie. These yeah. sort of long, comedic monologues. I mean, that's when you told right. me that that's who it was, I was like, that's perfect. That's absolutely perfect. perfect. But he's he so is... Funny. So, like, the, it, it occurs in a lot of episodes where... Adam, Dave, his character Dave, more or less confronts me as like, you know, you do your boring stuff, do your stuff. You know what I mean? It's it's really fun. It is so fun to write lines for Adam and also for Michael Ian Black because he is so I didn't see vicious. Him but like, we oh yes, yes, that's lines. right. He was in that episode. Yeah, he is so vicious, and there's you know he can beat our lines he a lot. He is so funny. 
but it's like so fun to like write lines and we'll sit on a table read and people will be like, oh my God, I can't believe he said that about you. And I'm like, I wrote that. I don't <laughs> right. care. But yeah, it's like, yeah, because it's also like, you know, it's, you have to, you're not, we're not just playing to like one crowd because there are going to be people who watch the show who identify with Jim, maybe, and people who identify with me, maybe, but also there's going to be people that identify with like the single guy who's like, are you fucking kidding me that you didn't get a vasectomy or something at this point? Like, yeah. there's there is a truth to that, that we have people in our lives that are like, what are you guys trying to do here? Like, mm-hmm. Are you trying to beat some contest? Yeah, I mean, or- as, yes. a, as a comedian that's married, don't you feel like, you know, it's it's unnatural to get married? Don't you feel like it's <laughs> yeah? No, you sold I, out, huh? I do. You're sold out. I, I don't feel like it's my natural state at I, all. I enjoy. Being I love married. my wife, but I don't like being married. No, it's a very strange thing. It's just like it's. It's so it's like the the norm for a comedian is Todd Berry. Right. You're supposed yes. to be Todd Berry. Well, because part... you're supposed to be able to focus 100% on this and thing. And have a it's sense of freedom. Like, but I'm going to tour Jim England. Jim has a part of him, and I, maybe Rich does too, and I'm sure Christian does too. And maybe you do too. I don't know, because, like, I never... Yeah, don't be sexist right, right. now. Right. I <laughs> never lived that sort of, like, part nomadic... part Like, it wasn't for me. <laughs> yeah. Like, um, but there is a part of Jim that will always be... A single guy. Like, he acts like a single guy a lot. And I'm not, everyone's yeah. looking at me like, where's the adultery story? No, I know you But it's like, he has his own. No, I was like, thinking more like where it. he, like, when we're, uh, you know, going through the airport or whatever, Rich is like 200 feet ahead of me <laughs> exactly. and I'm dragging the car <laughs> the baby seat and the thing. And he's no, like, just got his one bag and he's gone. It's, it's like, ex- I mean, it's just like, I'm not, like, at first I just like took it. And sometimes I think I do kind of act like it's just all out of selfishness. But, but yeah. Jim is so shocked that I think he's doing is selfish that it's like somehow i feel guilty for pointing out that he no no i am thing. selfish i mean having kids selfish, was just like his... was really important for making me not a monster but deep, deep inside, <laughs> Very important. he's a single g- comedian that or he's a single guy who lives by himself and i have to kind of respect that sometimes he'll do these things and i won't name examples of them because they're just plant flowers they're not like that, but um, they're just certain things that he'll do where he'll, you know, whether it's like making himself a pizza or something like that. You know, I mean, I had to use food, but it's just yeah. something where he's not really <laughs> thinking about. Oh, no, no. Rich will totally make himself something to eat. And then I'll come downstairs and I'll be like, did you just make yourself something to eat? And he goes, oh, I didn't know you were hungry. Well, you know how you fix that? You go, hey, you hungry? <laughs> And then right. you can make, but if he asks me that and I say yes, then he would have to make me something. So he doesn't. And there's you know? that, also that total walking ahead in the airport. I mean, there's just certain things where it's like it's not selfish. It's just like this is the programming <laughs> that's inside. Because I guess they've just done it for so many so years. So many years. And these, they are trainable. Like now, Jim I'm is very actually trainable. making me, he actually, like, he gives me a napkin. <laughs> like, he I can't never, believe I bring a napkin. Like, he brings a napkin now. Did and, you like, bring a napkin? So, because, like, you know, dads, I mean, this but is really you have sexy. a learning curve. Rich has no learning he curve. He has a learning curve, but I'm also probably more of a bitch than you are. But so, I like, guys, you're both bitches. Look, I'm, bring, I'm okay. pretty bitchy. So he'll bring an ice cream cone to a kid with no napkin. Like, that's just yes. And then oh, one time the I was sick. I've told cone. this on the show before, yeah. but one time I was sick and I asked Rich uh, to get me a piece of toast, just a dry toast. And he just, I'm in bed. He brought me up a piece of dry toast. No napkin, no plate. <laughs> <laughs> like, are you fucking kidding me right See, now? That seems totally logical to me. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, you're gonna what, eat you it. Want you're toast. gonna eat the bread. What, you I mean, want to clean a plate afterwards? I'm looking he, out. No, for he this. always says exactly. I didn't want to waste a plate. Yeah. Wait, do we just throw them out after? What do you mean? <laughs> Yeah, totally. that's one that's plate good. earlier. You're gonna have to yeah. do a little. Of well, dishes. we we don't have. Pro- I have to go to this guy because uh, we don't have problems like James. James in Utah. Hey, how you guys doing? Good. How are you? I uh, you know usually I'm. I, I love listening to your show. I just laughed my ass off. But uh, the other day, just got a, a a fucking blow. What happened? And not a good one. Oh. I I've, I've known my girlfriend for we started dating about. We've been together for three years. Uh huh. She's the youngest of nine kids. Youngest of nine. Um. There's. She's thirty-seven. She just found out her oldest brother is her dad. 
And <laughs> but do you got to wait, on. wait, we got to process that a little bit. Does yeah, that mean the brother along. had sex with the mom? Yeah. The mom yeah. incested the her son. I I mean I it, it I don't fucking know, but then all of a sudden you know now we're we're about to get married. You know, we've been engaged for. Uh, She's a product of incest. I'm sure it's fine. You know, people That's always say one like fewer person you have to buy a Christmas yeah, present. Yeah, I mean, yeah, this is so weird. You know, now, now I'm thinking, you know, uh, uh, yeah, my DNA. Mm-hmm. What your DNA doesn't have anything to do with. Listen, people say all the time, "Oh, incest creates like these problems in people." <laughs> but if that were the case, there'd be all kinds of people walking around with like a thirty year and you know. Weird... So you're for incest? I'm not saying I'm for incest, but I'm <laughs> but just saying not... I don't think that no. it causes well, those and problems. And I don't think this should affect okay. his relationship. Well, and it's something people say so you don't my, do it. My girl is fucking freaking out. Yeah, I. Was she just found upset. out? Yeah, she just found we everybody. You know, it just came out this week. Well, how did they? How did everybody find yeah. out? A Yelp review. Facebook. You know, <laughs> family. You know, people dying. You know, uh, that kind of stuff. You know, uh, she's what she's like seventeen years younger than you know the guy. Right. The who, her who's now her dad. Her dad, bro. Her, her bro did. Brother. Her bro dad. Wow. Like, now, what did they do a DNA? I mean, how did they do? Did they do a paternity test? I mean, is this just Maury, a rumor? They were on Maury is this Povich. Came out, you know, it, it, in, in family secret. Yep. Well, but is it a suspicion and a rumor, or is it proven? Did is the it, mom admit it? Mormons. Well, uh, that's not. No, no. But did the mom? Oh, it's Mormons. That right? it's so fact. <laughs> they do that. No. Who? How do you know for sure that this is a true story? It's you know the, the the family it's it's coming right out and 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 my girl she's a psychiatrist and, and she is is freaking out and she doesn't even know how to process this. Is the father that she, she thought was the father still alive? Yeah. Did he know? Yeah. He knew. That's and what I mean. This this, this whole family shit. Um, and the I'm, it's all these family secrets Wait, can, that, that have come out. Can I just ask one logistical thing? Uh, Bonnie sort of asked this, but the the man who is now your girlfriend's father, is he by blood the son of her mother? Or is, is a like son a from a different... Situation. Yeah, is it like a step? Or is it actual, literally, a mother had sex with her son and then had a daughter? The mother had sex with the son, and that's my girlfriend. Wow. That's that's got to be really well, rough. Well, say on this: her. if she takes after her mom, she's into some kinky shit. So the guy who my girlfriend thought was her dad for her entire life. I don't think it's going to be too hard years. to get her into a threesome. So her <laughs> so, former dad is now her grandpa, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh fuck! You just blew my mind. But but oh, wait a minute. But the thing is, is like I mean, obviously, I think you gotta be really. So it sounds like you're hesitant about this relationship, but you got to step in, no, even if you don't want to. No, I think he's hesitant because he thinks yeah, that if he I'm, marries I'm this girl. I mean, you know, I'm I'm we're three years into our relationship, a year and a half into an, an engagement, you know, planning our lives together, and all of a sudden this bombshell. Gets well, if you love her, I mean, it doesn't have anything. She didn't do anything wrong. She's yeah. just a human being. I'm sure not, she's fine. It's not like a weird royal bloodline where it's been happening for centuries. Right. It's, it's not going to mess up her genes or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, you're going to have a yeah. healthy kid. And, I would think that. She's very vulnerable. Yeah, she I don't think this you. is the right yeah. time for you to dump her. Like, I, yeah, I think it's actually probably the worst possible. Time I think that the her. best thing that you can do right now because you, she's going to need a lot of There's therapy and she's going to need a lot of support. Either you know, I mean, if you know, all of a sudden, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm, I, I am freaking out. I James, experts yes. say that if you find I out your girlfriend is a product of incest, you wait three months before you dump her. Just telling you what the experts, the doctor Spock said that. <laughs> Honestly, so, you have so to be here's there for what, her. Here's what I, you know, and I have a lot of sympathy or empathy. He's or whatever taking the notes. Word is. He's doing but research. What is so? What is this show? Like people call in. With- <laughs> <laughs> 
it's, a, it's a lot of inside comedy talk, and then I don't, it's comedy I have no idea. talk, it's, and then people that are hanging out listening well, to serious. James, you've listened to the show before, so you know, right? We we give we change lives. So people give uh, you, advice. Yeah, and, and see, I give get, good advice. People get advice from you know they they want to air out their problems, so yeah. they call Bonnie and, uh, and Voss. I, I never, I, I honestly never thought I'd be I, I'd be calling, and all I want to do is just to tune in and laugh, but I. I, I'm beside myself. I'm. It's. It is beyond my brain, Matt. Well, you. I'm glad you called in because you're in the right hands. Yeah, I think. Um, just you know, give, give, give. You know, instead of thinking about yourself, think yeah, about what your is, your girlfriend needs, your fiance so needs. This is an opportunity to be a good Utah boyfriend. Where in Utah are you? <laughs> where in Utah are you? Cedar City, Utah. That's a good town. Why don't try to get specific so you can find? And what is the name of the farm? <laughs> Honestly, I mean, I think that just the fact that you are so concerned about this and not just like freaking out and walking away is showing that you're a really good man and that mm-hmm. you should you should really realize that, like, if your mind is blown, just think about, you know, this yeah, family. But this is also, you know, Sam Shepard wrote a play called Buried Child. He's, he's, OK, oh, but sorry. he's talking. Go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. Uh, I, I think, yeah, she I mean, she's my mind blown, but she is. She's freaking out. I And I. I love her. I mean, there's, you know, I. There you go. That's all we need to know. You you love her. uh, Uh, James, we gotta, we gotta cut you off. uh, (laughs) Advice and and I'll uh, hang with her and I'll I'll, uh, give her a shoulder. So thank Thank you. you. Thank you, James. Thanks for calling and uh, sharing this sordid story with us. We know you're going to do the right thing. We don't. don't I like how GD, like, was really, like, you actually were, like, concerned. I. But halfway th- through, I was like, this is a fake call. Yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't I, know. I, I wrote Who this knows? on the piece paper a while ago. <laughs> yeah. like, I'm yeah. not entirely sure. I mean, he had the wrong accent that. for Utah. What are the chances that was James Corden who hosts? <laughs> 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 and if he's going to play it on the Tonight Show. <laughs> and then they're going to sing in a car. I haven't seen any of that. Have you watched, like... Let's talk I, about I, I have to watch it like shows. a horror movie. Okay. Like I watch night it for years. I don't know who watches them How anymore because I don't. Uh, I did see you guys on it, you which did? is fantastic. Oh, okay. Yes. How significant is it to? Because when we were coming up, appearing on those shows, and obviously I saw you on Letterman. It's great. But what is that? I importance? always quote you when I what when is, I do my interviews about Letterman because you told me just go out there. I go, you, you said when I well, the first time I did it, you said just go. Go out there and say to yourself, I'm on Letterman, which I thought was bad advice because you should yeah. just try to pretend you're anywhere but Letterman. Yeah. But the truth is, when I walked out, I said to myself, you're on Letterman. And then I just smiled. It was just gr- it was like, ah, yeah. I made it. And then it was fantastic. So what, you gave me good advice. I gave good advice. What now? What I is, think they're going to book me sometime soon. I think what is yeah. what yeah. is yeah. The I hate to break it to you, Christian. Oh, you're not no. getting what is Letterman. The status thing like Letterman was the status. I guess it's Fallon, right? Uh, Conan? No. I mean, for, well, I think, for, for, I think comedians? for comedian legitimacy, I think among comedians, Conan might have an edge at this point just because th- they seem more supportive of stand up in general. Yeah. But I think in terms of career impact, I don't think any of them have any impact, honestly. But uh, I think probably. No, Fallon. even Letterman really didn't have. No. I, no. I plugged clubs on Letterman that I went and to so like the next tactics. day and there still wasn't anybody yeah, in yeah. there. Same <laughs> with me. Yeah. Um, but. Uh, what that was such an important thing. I'm not saying like you know way before us like the Tonight Show. Uh, David Steinberg would you know do a set and then around the corner people would be standing in line. <laughs> I'm not talking about that. Like I didn't, but I'm talking about like the status where you felt like a real comedian. And I think it's the rise of Comedy yes. Central. It's like I have a half hour comedy special. Right. I'm a real yes. comedian. Yes. Yeah. You know what are those things? You know what I mean? Well, there's now. I always say that there's a thousand gatekeepers, and none of them can afford a gate. You know, there's well, all, there's, thank, no, you, thank you, Chris. Thank you. I think we got a tweet here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But do you know what I mean? That it's like, I believe Christian Finnegan said. It's like the, the impact of Carson has been split up in about a thousand yes. different you know right. entities, blogs, podcasts, whatever. Yeah. And none of them mean, they all mean one thousandth as much as they used to. Like probably Mark Maron's show means as much as anything at this point. Right. I don't know. In terms of actual Not his show, I mean, his, uh, his, his podcast. 
Yeah, I mean, yeah. well, Bob and Tom, I mean, if you're talking about just pure ticket sales, I, actual, I think yeah. some of the syndicated road radio shows probably have more impact than Letterman. Yeah. Probably. Well, it is weird. You do certain things actually help get people coming to the clubs and certain, like I did Nick Mom. I don't know if people know about that. I do. Um, Nick Mom. But they, they, they get nobody into the show. You know, they, that does nothing. But, you know, then you do, it's just weird. Then you do somebody's podcast, and that gets a ton of people into the show. Right. It's like a weird thing. You never really know. Like, I'm sure if you did Comedy Central, that gets people into the clubs because people who like comedy are watching Comedy Central. Yeah, but. Comedy Central really t- helps with ticket oh, sales. I, gotta, I mean, it's... Best Week Ever helped a lot when it was on. Um, that? Best Week Ever was helpful yeah. when I was when I was on that. But uh, but yeah, I mean, are we there yet? Nothing. I mean, nobody. Well, I would I would get people from Are We There Yet, but sometimes they'd be like, Oh no, you're not going to enjoy this at all. <laughs> like my stand up oh, is right. not right. like this is not no, going to be for sorry. you at all. <laughs> so yeah. Um, okay, well, we can start plugging our stuff now, and we're getting ready to the dismount? to wrap to it up. get out of here. I'll do. I'll go first. You go first. Um. June 5th and 6th, I'm at the Comedy Bar in Toronto. Anybody ever been there? Oh, mm, Yeah, it's a nice I've... little... I've never been there. Uh, Sunday, June 7th, I'm in Scranton, Pennsylvania at the Radisson. The uh, Radisson. Scranton. Guys, they do a lot of really cool shit. Scranton, that's where uh, that championship season uh, Jason Miller is from. Oh, the thank, you for, thank you for adding that. Uh, um, this Friday through Sunday, Ventura Marcus. Comedy Club, Ventura, California. That's Rich Voss. Ventura. One more time. One more time. What was that? Rich Voss will be at the Ventura Comedy Club, Ventura, California, this Friday through Sunday. Get your tickets now, folks. He's on a door deal. He needs your help. That's a great show. Yeah. I don't know who else is on it. He oh, and on uh, Sunday, uh, Rich and I appear on Parts Unknown, the Anthony Bourdain show. Neat. Oh, you and, and uh, yeah, you have, he's doing jersey. What about what about your uh, your book that you're writing with Anthony? It's Bourdain? called. Uh, I'm not writing it with him. No, I mean. So wait, he's going to Jersey. Is this a, a, a new show called Parts Known? <laughs> Parts Known. <laughs> yes. Is, is he getting the Rich Jersey hot dog where they deep fry the hot I dog? I don't know. I don't know. You're but I know Rich up. and I did it, and I get nervous around Anthony Bourdain, so I I'm sure I appear like an asshole. Uh, on the show nervous because i don't know would... because he, he he's done a lot for me and oh, so really? i anybody who can help me i get like the casting couch. i'll like walk the opposite direction oh <laughs> yeah no i'm totally the same way you're like, you, you, you still don't want to be that guy can help you so much well i guess i'll ignore them yes oh i know oh my god i know exactly what you're talking about <laughs> it's just like Oof. just be human and then when what Rick, would yeah. what would Jeff Ross or Aziz do in That's this situation? Totally I'll do the opposite. That happens to me. I'm so bad that way that like I will like ignore the person and they'll wind up like thinking yeah. I'm mean. Yes, and I, I know. Like, like yeah, I don't yeah. want them to think I want anything yes, from them, so I'm just yes. gonna pretend they're not here. I, I used and then there was a guy like, in the industry who could have really helped me, and he kept calling, like telling like let's have lunch, let's hang out, and I so didn't want to be that guy. And then once he left me a voicemail, I was like, listen, I get it, we're not friends like that, I get it, no problem. And I'm like, I just in in my career has not has suffered yes. because. That. And that man was Bruce Valanche. <laughs> <laughs> the gatekeeper that can afford a gate. You should see his hilarious <laughs> fuck one. Christian Finnegan t-shirt that he wears. <laughs> uh, so my book is called uh, You're Better Than Me. It comes out January 2016. Oh, that's fun. It's gone to the printers. I got uh, oh, my really? second check today, in fact. That's fun. Exciting. One, more, right. one more check coming. When you write a book, don't you feel like when you get done, you're like, wow, that's amazing. I never want to do that again. Oh, no, it's awful. And also, I have to, you have to fight such a like who gives a shit so yeah. much you're writing you're just like ah why why would anyone care i don't yeah. know that's what i feel you guys your books are better <clears throat> um <laughs> go ahead and what is uh genie uh um i would say go to jim right now and um you know just give it five minutes and watch the episode watch the episode give it five minutes i guarantee you'll be sucked in it's yeah. wicked good it's and great. then starting july 16th Jeannie Gaffigan and I and our five kids are going on a 30-day bus tour. Holy this shit. Great country. Doing stand-ups. Look Doing on his stand-ups. website. Get your dates. Yeah. Well, that sounds fun. But you guys have probably done that, right? Um, Traveled with the with the type. Oh, she Raina comes with me. She'll be with yeah. me in Toronto. She Everywhere I go, she comes with me. But uh, Rich does his own. We don't all travel as a family. So because bad. rich is annoying. Um, Christian, um, where are you? I have a stand up special on Netflix that oh, people should watch. Mm-hmm. It's I called, did watch it. It's, it's fantastic. Good. Thank you. It's very nice. It's called The Fun Part, and it is uh, streaming as we speak. 
Literally. And like I said, if you're in the New York area, please come check out QED. QED Astoria. Lots of wicked good stuff there. Sounds fun. You guys, thank you for coming, all of you. Thanks. Each and every one of you. And yeah, next, uh, next week I'll be back with uh, Rich Voss. I'll be back, folks. You got I'll two be back. Okay, bye. Boop. Boop. <laughs>